गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस ऑन अप्रोच टू ए प्रैक्टिकल एग्जाम केस दिस इज नॉट ओनली फॉर पोस्ट ग्रेजुएट्स इट्स यूजफुल फॉर इवन फॉर ऑल अवर प्रैक्टिसिंग रेडियोलिस्ट एन एवरी डे लेट अस सी हाउ टू अप्रोच ए पर्टिकुलर केस देर इज ऑलवेज ए स्टेप वाइज अप्रोच फॉर एवरी थिंग वॉट एवर वी डू इन आर लाइफ सेम थिंग द स्टेप वाइज अप्रोच शुड बी अप्लाइड इवन इन अ केस विच वी गेट this stepwise approach will always easily solve our problem so first initial thing is the patient details and the history then identification of the abnormality once once the scan is done location of the abnormality characteristics of a lesion differential diagnosis and systemic involvement narrowing the differentials further investigations interventions and other modalities and follow up so let us see how to approach so initially the patient details and history always be a clinical radiologist don't just be a radiologist we are already a clinicians we have passed through that path of mbbs and then we have become a radiologist so always try to find out the age sex of the patient duration of the complaints onset family history predisposing factors and all the clinical laboratory investigations whatever has been done till now so these give a lot of clue for the diagnosis this coming to the identification of abnormality so before coming to abnormal things what is normal what are the normal anatomical variants what are the primary findings and then coming to the incidental lesions so in radiology we need to know what is a normal anatomy and we need to know what are the normal variations which should not be confused with the disease so there are very lot of normal variations which may simulate a disease there are books like this there is a new edition you can go through those, these books or there are a lot of websites showing lot of anatomical variations <clears throat> if you google it if you google it you will get lot of anatomical variations and if you do go search in rsna journals you will get lot of anatomical variations in each and every system so first we need to know what is normal then the normal variants and what are the primary findings of a lesion once you find an abnormality then look for the primary findings what is the main thing and then look the surrounding structures and other organ involvement and look finally look into the incidental lesions sometimes lumbosacral transitional vertebra might be seen in a routine ct abdomen cases which i do see spine at the end of the study and sometimes adrenal adenomas i have seen a lot of adrenal adenomas which are incidentally seen which are not related to the primary disease and once you have located the abnormality you need to know how to localize it what is it what is the lesion like bone versus soft tissue we have a lot of uh, features which can differentiate bone lesion versus soft tissue lesion lung versus mediastinal lesions like this which is given in the radiology assistant you can go through various features which can differentiate both of them intraaxial versus extraaxial lesion you can see the cleft sign buckling sign and lot of other things to differentiate the intraaxial versus extraaxial lesion in the brain neurovascular structures so once we have seen all the location and localization of abnormality look at the neurovascular structures what's happening in musculoskeletal system or neuro neurology or in git so these neurovascular structures also give important clinical clues for the diagnosis and coming to the adjacent joints in case of musculoskeletal cases and phloids on mri is very important always look at the phloids if you see here in this case the, always look at the vessel phloids this is a normal left petrous segment which is showing a normal blackish appearance which is called as a normal phloid and if you see here on right side there is a phloid is lost so there is occlusion of right ica so these cue the clue or the cause for the in fact what could be the cause and that gives a clinician way to look for and what can be done further for this patient so phloids are very important please look at the phloids on mri not only brain abdomen even the peripheral joints as well as limbs and coming to the important most important thing which i have learned is the basal sections the basal sections are very 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 important very very small contusions small lesions small meningiomas and temporal arachnoidosis are usually located in the basi frontal and basi temporal lobes you should never miss those lesions that could be the cause for the patient's complaints 
so basal sections also are very important coming to the characteristics of a lesion so once you are find out the lesion once you have find localize the lesion then what are the characteristics of a lesion so it could be an art mini finding or it could be a classical sign or it could be a classic location so we look for all these three things first whether it is an art mini finding or a classic sign or a classic location which will give you the diagnosis so here is an example which i can show is a delta sign you can see here it's entirely hyperdense you can see the superior sagittal sinus is hyperdense here so it's a classic sign which is called as delta sign for thrombosis venous sinus thrombosis and classic location for thyroglossal cyst introsseous lipoma that is in the calcaneum and colloid cyst anterior aspect of third ventricle roof all these do have a classic locations once you find the lesion these classic location it gives you gives away the diagnosis so look at these three things first then come to the ct enhancement patterns or mr enhancement or signal intensity patterns so in neck or abdomen we take a triple phase ct delayed phase so all these enhancement patterns will give you a conclusion is there any enhancement significant enhancement is present or absent whether it is increasing enhancement or decreasing enhancement whether it is a fibrous tissue all we come to know on the enhancement patterns of the ct so that is the reason why plain ct doesn't give you a conclusive diagnosis and coming to the mr signal enhancement look at all the sequences the t1 t2 swi dwi pd fat set or stir sequences it will characterize the lesion and it will narrow the differentials so mr signal on all the sequences has to be carefully assessed then only you will know the, about the lesion characteristics then coming to the differential diagnosis and systemic involvement so there will be many differentials for a lesion like in this image if you see all of them look like once you look at this picture but if you go in detail there are minor differences so unless you characterize the lesion unless you look it properly unless you analyze the lesion like in ct enhancement patterns or mr signal intensity patterns you can we cannot come to conclusion so for liver example if you see a lesion it could be a metastasis or hemangioma or hcc like this it could be anything but most of them look alike in the plane but once contrast is done or once mr is done there are a lot of things which can differentiate these conditions like in lung once there is a lesion it could be an aspergilloma or a cavitator metastasis or a cavity with blood clot it could be anything we need to assess properly then coming to bone so solitary bone cyst aneurysmal bone cyst lipoma so these sbc abc and lipoma will have a characteristic location like in metaphysis diaphysis and lipoma occurring in a calcaneum so again it gives you a conclusive diagnosis and coming to the few conditions like osteosarcoma versus evening sarcoma which might be very difficult we need to carefully assess each and every point where it is arising from how is it spreading how is it going to the soft tissues and how what what type of periosteal reaction is produced so there are a lot of things in each and every entity when there is always a differential diagnosis for a particular region so there are few minor things which we need to find out to know or to come to a conclusion of a diagnosis then coming to the soft tissues so again similarly we get lot of soft tissue masses like myxoma neurofibroma schwannoma lipoma we get lot of things again based on the ct or ct enhancement patterns or the mr signal intensity patterns can differentiate these things and coming to brain tuberculosis versus ncc which is a lot of dilemma for all of us now but the spectro will help most of the times and also presence of scolex within it and based on the edema location of the lesion all there are many other things which will differentiate this tuberculosis versus ncc narrowing the differentials so how can you narrow the differentials history always look into the history i have seen i'm going to tell you an example i've seen a swelling in a patient of 35 year old male which has been operated and came with the recurrence then i called the patient inside i asked him i saw the swelling again it is it was present over the forearm and it was been operated he told he told it it has been operated and again it is recurred before doing an mr then i assessed him do you have any swellings all over the body other than this then he showed yes he had lot of swellings it's a clear cut neurofibromatosis case 
you are not supposed to operate like that so without a history never 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 give your diagnosis always ask your history try to find out the clinical clues like syndromic features i have seen, I have seen a keflate spots in that patient i have, i made him remove his shirt and i saw all the clinical clues so all these are going to give you a lot of narrowing the differential by, by clinical itself additional clues apart from primary abnormality like hcc in cirrhosis so you look for the cirrhotic features that will give a clue that it is more towards hcc like in case of tuberous sclerosis look at the cortical tubers you might be seeing a hype white matter hypodensities you don't think that as an ischemic foci because in tuberous tuberous sclerosis those hypodensities could be cortical tubers so all these are very important and always do correlation by yourself either x-ray correlation or usg correlation or ct correlation like bone lesions or female pelvic lesions which always need some amount of usg x-ray and ct correlations so once you are finding a lesion you will be in this stage and you will have a lot of differential differentials so how to narrow this once you pick up a lesion characteristic location and everything you will get a lot of other findings and you can come to the single diagnosis so you should always be like this initially we will find a lesion we will get a different path ways but you need to narrow the differential diagnosis by picking up a lot of important points and come to a single conclusive diagnosis further investigations always suggest the further investigations like usg pet ct or pet mr elastography if you are having all these things you can do it immediately and conventional contrast studies like gerd the patient might be having an epigastric pain suspected pancreatitis but pancreas is normal that could be a gerd case or atresia cardia or if it is a uterine anomaly or infertility case go for hsg so all these things uh, further investigations play an important role in giving you a final diagnosis coming to interventions never forget the interventions it can be the diagnostic as well as therapeutic so usg or ct guided biopsy or fnac can be done distal substraction angiography like in case of avms vascular malformations which is a gold standard and ercp for all these cbd mpd pathologies and cvd stones ercp gives you a conclusive diagnosis so all these are diagnostic interventions i mean therapeutic interventions like in like distal substraction angiography laser ablation rf ablation microwave ablation there are a lot of therapeutic interventions coming up a lot of advances going on so we need to know each and inter- every intervention which is coming up day by day the follow up follow up is very important and you might get a follow up case which might have previously evaluated so look for the response of treatment whether it is improved or not improved size lesion number additional features increased or same or it is decreased and further evaluation is needed or not or whether is there any need of intervention or a surgical follow up and surgical follow up will give you a lot of information always try to speak with the surgeon once the case is done just ask him call him up and try to get the follow up you will get a lot of information along with your findings on imaging so surgical follow up is very 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 important and take home points be a clinical radiologist not just a radiologist you are a clinical radiologist and radiology is anatomy if you know normal you will find out the abnormal so first thing is normal and non anatomical variants are must which we should know and practicing cases and involving in interactive case sessions will give you a lot of confidence before giving in your examinations and see more 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 keep seeing cases keep seeing cases that is how we learn by ourselves and thank you very much and happy teachers day